All right, good afternoon, evening, or morning, whenever you're watching this uh, presentation. We hope your day's going well and everything is, is uh, on the up and up for you. for taking the time to to come to our website and, and view our webinar here um, in regards to to life insurance and understanding everything that goes uh, around it there's probably a lot of misconceptions out there in regards to life insurance but hopefully we can clear some of that up for you and and uh, get you on a more knowledgeable pace that way if you have questions after this webinar you can feel free to reach out to me or to your advisor or whoever may have questions um, uh, about, about life insurance. So again, my name is Seth Wild. Uh, I've been a part of Wild Wealth Management since 2007 when I graduated from the University of Utah and moved down here with, at the time, my only son, uh, Jackson. Now we have four additional ones. So we have five kids. We have three boys ranging from uh, 15, 11, and 9. And then my wife wanted one more, but yet we got twin girls. So, and they are now almost five. So yeah, they're, they're fun and they're exciting, but uh, a lot of work. So um, you, you, much, you might know a lot about our firm. Um, we have a Scottsdale location, a Glendale, a Tempe, Payson, uh, San Luis Obispo, California location. So it's kind of fun watching it grow from when I was starting in 2007 to where it is today. It's leaps and bounds. But, you know, we have a group of um, advisors here in our Scottsdale office and um, that you may or may not know. But we also have teams out in, in Tempe where I am located. Uh, in Glendale and those other locations that I mentioned previously but you know our firm uh, is dedicated to helping those individuals evaluate their financial situations right we want to provide uh, people with the tools um, that can really help them you know take their education to the next level and make informed decisions so that's why we're doing this webinar series, and we hope that some of this information here can um, put a shining light on maybe a topic that you didn't really know too much about, and but wanted to, and this will make it easy for you. So we'll we'll just get right into it. So why why do you need life insurance, right? It's one of those questions. As but a, 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 as a part of this seminar, we look at it and say, okay, well. We want to leave money for our loved ones, whether it's your significant other, your kids, a charity, um, whatever. Basically, it's something that means a lot to you, right? So when you purchase life insurance, um, it gives you that more confidence of knowing that your family will be cared for or whoever will be cared for when you pass away. So you're kind of preparing um, that next in line to be sufficient to keep going without you. So that's the primary driver of life insurance. Um, why do I need life insurance? Um, the biggest, the biggest uh, asset someone has here is the ability to earn their income, right? So as you get married, uh, you start your job out, you might not be um, earning as much as you are if you're 10, 15, 20 years into your career. So though, as that time progresses, um, you know, you, your, your wage does too. So you're missing out on those the vast um, valuable assets that you have there allowing you to, to really have that earned income. So let's just take as an example myself. If I was 30, I'm not, I'm older, unfortunately. Um, let's say I was making, and you'll see on this slide here, 100,000, um, and then at age 65, that would be about 3.5 million is what my earned income would have been throughout my lifetime. So if I pass away at 35 unexpectedly, 
you know, there's a lot of unused or unearned income that I would have generated for my family that now my family is missing out on. Um, and whether or not your wife works or if she is a stay-at-home mom or, or does other things, um, that's a big chunk of income to miss out on right away. And if you don't have life insurance, hopefully, you know, that individual was, was saving and doing some other things that there might be a buffer zone of that um, for that, you know, next individual. So how much life insurance do you need? Um, it takes into account these five pieces. Um, one is final expenses. So typically it costs about 10000 to go through that normal berry and casket and that process of, of when someone passes away. Um, your mortgage or rent, right? So if you pass away and, and I'm the primary earner, um, how am I going to pay my either pay off my mortgage or keep paying my mortgage or keep paying for my rent, right? That's a huge um, cost. And typically you, you need a house, if you, especially if you have kids or, or you need somewhere to live to, to keep your life on track without, so it won't get you disheveled. Uh, the next would be, you know, your debt. Whether if, you know, you have some credit card debt or Whatever that debt may be, the life insurance may help you wipe that out. So you're starting with a clean slate and getting back to your normal routine. Um, Childcare, you know, that's another big one. Now you don't have the uh, ability to stay home with your kids. And so you are um, forced or if they're not old enough to go into school, then you're kind of forced to put them in a daycare while you go to work. Um, the average 2017 study found that the middle income family spends over $230,000 raising the child, raising a child to 18. So then that's a, 230,000 is a lot to spend on um, childcare. So either way you look at it, that's a, a big expense as well. And then college education. Do you want to pay for your kids to go to school? Do you want to make sure that they have that good education without them getting in debt or, but that's another, you know, issue depending on whether or not you guys have decided to, to pay for your kid's school or not. Um, there are a few different types of life insurance. Um, the first being term insurance. And then um, the second is a cash value uh, type of insurance. You know, after you determine um, the amount of insurance you need, the next question is, is what type do I get? So I'll kind of go into the difference between these two and kind of give you those details. So term insurance, the advantages of term insurance is that one, it's cheap. Um, it's only for a short term period. So they have five, you know, they have annual renewable. They have um, five year, 10 year, 20 year and 30 year terms, right? And those are all pretty inexpensive to, to get. And after those terms are, are over, you can either renew for an, another 10 years if that's the way you started, or you are able to um, go for a longer period, um, but it's gonna, it's gonna basically cost at your new age. So if you were 30 when you got a 20 year term, now you're 50 and you're, and you're going back in and reapplying at, a, at, at an age of 50. So it, the, the cost will bump up a little bit, but it still will be pretty affordable. Um, most plans, like it says here, can be renewed in that type of fashion, whether it's um, converted to a whole life or universal life product or re, um, re-upped in a new length of term. So. The dis again, the disadvantages are um, the premiums can increase or will increase with the new term period. So again, if you're going for 30 and then you have 50 years, that the premium that you're paying for those past 20 is not going to be the same as if you were paying it uh, on the new policy, essentially. Um, there's no benefit payout um, if you outlive the policy and um, it does not build up a cash value within itself. So 
those those are the big advantages and disadvantages of term life. Again, the, I think the major um, advantage with term is if you need it for a short period of time, then it allows you to to be flexible um, with with that cost and with your death benefit amount. Um, but then again, on the flip side, there's no real benefit uh, in the in the long term, whereas it doesn't build the cash value. So, but it's for someone who's younger, term insurance is typically the the route we we would suggest. But every scenario is different, so we that would just something we have we would we would have to talk through. Uh, the next piece here is a, is a cash value life plan. So it's basically something that will either um, allow you to have a dividend income through or just and help you pay for your insurance or it will uh, build up a little nest egg with, with inside the, the life insurance policy to get you to um, derive a secondary income when you decide to retire. So there's a lot of benefits to um, cash value life. Like it says on here, it builds value over time. It provides funds without depleting your estate and it's got some tax deferred growth and uh, potential for tax-free income. That was one of the things I just mentioned. But the disadvantage here is the higher costs. And the reason for the higher costs is, let's say you get a policy at age 35, your premiums are pretty locked in uh, for your rest of your life. So there's no cash, depending on the type of product that you get into, there's not gonna be a cost uh, of adjustment of the premium or whatever that may be. So you're, you're paying at your age 35 um, to basically have that annual premium or monthly premium or semi-annual um, that, that will, roughly won't change um, throughout your whole lifetime, whereas the term is for a short period. So as part of the cash value policies, um, there is a subcategory which is whole life and universal life. I'm gonna detail some whole life information now where it has a low initial premium. Um, the idea, I, it's an idea short term um, needs type of uh, product even though it's more geared for a longer term but it has some quick cash building um, pieces to it that will allow you to accomplish some goals in the zero to five year range. Uh, it's got tax deferred growth and most cl most plans can be renewed and but the, di di the disadvantages are it might not keep up with the rate of inflation and that might slow the growth of the cash value within the plan. So another type of insurance is universal life. So universal life has flexible premiums and death benefit so along the way as you decide to um, manage this policy, you are able to uh, lower the death benefits and decrease your premiums, increase your premiums, as long as you're doing an illustration first to make sure it doesn't negative, negatively affect your uh, policy. You know, that's the last thing you want is to make a change and then have it, you get a notice saying your policy is going to lapse and you need to pay this much money because um, that's the difference that needed to be there for this policy to remain active and in force. Um, the cash growth reflects the current interest rates and, the, and it's again much like universal life or whole life, excuse me, there's tax deferred earnings and uh, I'm sorry it's tax deferred growth excuse me and the potential for um, tax-free income so down the road when you decide to retire and you hit the age of 65 or 70 whatever that may be you can turn this policy into a secondary income stream and have that this policy pay you a little bit of that cash value every month or every quarter or however often you want to um, to help you derive and, and keep your uh, cash flow sufficient. Um, the disadvantages of universal life is that the premiums um, might have a chance to go up. 
sometimes people forget to make a, a premium payment, especially if they pay annually. So let's say you have a $2,000 annual payment and you forget to make it, that's gonna negatively affect uh, the policy. So what you want to do is try to, to be aware that if you miss a premium this year, maybe um, increase that premium for next year. That way um, you're kind of fixing the problem as you go, whereas you're not just letting it go one year of being totally unpaid. Um, so that's, that's a piece that you, don't, you might not want to forget is if you decide to skip something or um, whatever it may be, you, you want to kind of make sure there's a catch up period there um, and also always run an illustration uh, first to see how these changes and how these um, uh, how, yeah how these changes will affect your 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 policy again that's the last thing you want to get is a, a lapse pending notice saying your policy might lapse if you don't make this upcoming premium so to keep your policy out of danger you want to make sure that you have done the things you need to do uh, to keep your policy in good order. Um, the interest rates grow slowly. Um, so, I'm sorry, if the, if the interest rates grow slowly, so will your cash value. Um, there are some index products that will pair up to the S&P 500. Um, the, the index universal life product is not mentioned in this slide, but that's a relatively um, newer uh, product type within the last you know five to eight years but it allows you to put it, some money and index it into the S&P 500 let's say um, and allow you to have a minimum there right so you know you're going to be earning at least two percent but if the S&P 500 gets up to a positive 20 percent you know your rate of return in there is going to be capped out at let's say 15%. So you won't get the full upside, but you also won't get that downside if the market should, should be um, performing badly at that time of investments. So um, there's a lot of good and, and bad things that come from here. I'll tell you, Universal Life is, a, is an amazing product and works, and works really well. Um, other benefits of cash value is, again, cash value accumulates tax-free so um, it allows you to use that money in there as a, an extra income source like I mentioned earlier and the dividend payout is another feature that can help you either pay your premiums or just be reinvested and in, back into the cash value and help your policy grow which is a little bit faster and then there are policy loans or slash withdrawals um, the loans are not taxable to you, um, and neither are the, the withdrawals. However, there's a caveat to that where it says is if you are surrendering your policy and you have an outstanding loan, and let's say your cash value is 20000 20, but you put in, through premiums, 15000 so that that 5,000 gap there would be taxable because you are getting back more than what you put into the policy. Um, so that is one way that these policies can affect you negatively tax-wise is if throughout all those years you're putting money in and the cash value exceeds the money that you put in, it would be taxable um, at a lower rate, but yeah, it's still taxable to you. So we have to be aware of that when we're going through this process. Some other additional benefits are the waiver premium, which is often to re referred as the self-completing feature, which is the, the waiver of your premium benefit. So because you're becoming terminally ill or you become disabled, it allows that policy to, to remain in force, but yet have you stop your premiums because you no longer have that earned income and or ability to, to make the payments. Um, usually adding this feature is a, an extra uh, small premium that's tied to the policy. So, um, but typically if there are some illnesses that run in the family 
adding that would be a good thing because it would help down the line. Um, and then accelerated death benefit. This allows you to access some of the death benefit. Now every company is different. Some are 50%, some are 60%, some are, you know, it just varies. But it'll allow you to access, let's say 50% of the death benefit. So if you have a $5,000 policy, I'm sorry, $500,000 policy, they will let you access $250,000 now and allow you to go do the things you want to do before you you pass away so that's a an availability usually those are kind of built in and don't tar, ca cost a lot extra or if anything but typically um, some carriers do have you pay some don't it just kind of depends um, but that is a unique feature with you know the whole life and cash value life some term carriers have it some but i would say most of them don't and then um, accidental death benefit, which is, uh, again, basically if something should happen to you accidentally, uh, which is, I know, it's usually it's an accident or an un unforeseen event that causes you a need for this, for this life insurance, but uh, if it's classified as an accident, your death benefit's paid out to you, and then an additional, additional benefit at whatever you um, previously um, dictated in the in, in, in the policy that would be your the, another small premium that would be paid out to you as a, as a death benefit and allow you to have a little bit extra there but typically um, that's one that's rarely used just because most most death benefits are accident related or just unforeseen events um, one that's not listed on here is a, what they call a chronic illness writer which essentially states um, that if you become disabled and cannot do two of the six daily living activities, uh, will help pay for long-term care costs. So this is not a long-term care policy or rider. It's called the chronic illness rider, but it helps supplement long-term care costs. So if you need to have someone come into your home and help take care of you for a few hours a day, um, then that will help pay for that. Or if you need to go into a facility, you know, there's a lot of benefits to that. So for instance, if you have a $500,000 policy, it, it will typically pay you 2% of that death benefit um, per month as a, as a long-term care supplement and help you, um, you know, not have to pay for that all out of your pocket but it comes off your death benefit. So if you're using your chronic illness rider and you use up $100,000 on your $500,000 policy, when you pass away, you now have a death benefit that's paid out of 400,000 because you use that 100,000 for that chronic illness riders and, and the needs that were there. So that's another one that's typically and become very popular just because you know, long-term care costs are extremely high, and this is a way for you to um, offset some of those uh, those costs when you're when you're a little older. Um, next steps is obviously, do I need life insurance, and how much do I need, and what type is best for me? Obviously, um, that's uh, something that you need to to think about and and talk to your spouse or your kids or whoever it may be for you to get that in line so that way when something does happen, you know, you're prepared for it. Um, you know, I think that the, the fact that insurance is one of those topics that a lot of people don't like to talk about, but it's important that you discuss that. That way you're giving your um, partner or, or whoever the peace of mind of knowing that they are covered when that time comes um, if, and if that time should come when you should predecease them now you're leaving them with a benefit to know they can continue on without too much stress obviously there's that burden of loss there which is always hard but um, the fact that you have this coverage here in place 
is a big, a big relief to those who you leave behind. Um, and if you don't know and, and you're thinking about it, you're racking your brain, you don't know, let us, let us help you figure that out. I can you know, help you or again, any of the advisors in this office or within Wild Wealth Management Group can help you if you are working with a specific person. They will walk you through it. They, we have calculators, we have those, those um, kind of charts and um, you know, facts that help us get to the root of what it would cost you and how much you need and all that to make sure that you're appropriately covered for life's uncertainties here. Again, thank you for uh, attending our uh, Investment Matters series webinar. Um, if you feel like you want some additional information on, on any of these types of insurances and um, want some help to, to look at your situation, to make sure you're appropriately covered or to get you covered, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, again, my name is Seth Wild here at Wild Wealth Management. Or if you are currently working with a Wild Wealth Management Advisor, reach out to them. They would be more than happy to help you through this process of making sure that you are ready to go, that you are ready and, and properly covered so that um, if one of life's uncertainties hits your family, that you are at least prepared for that. So again, thank you very much for your time. Have a great evening, great day, great afternoon. Take care, thank you.